A little while ago, I created a video showing how to create a picture-in-picture -picture effect for Final Cut Pro using Apple Motion. And alongside that, I also released my picture-in-picture -picture effect on my store as a download, so if you wanted to just buy it rather than build it yourself, you could do just that. Ever since then, I have been scheming on ways to improve the plugin, and so today, I am so excited to share with you version 2.0 of my new picture-in-picture -picture effect. In Final Cut Pro, I have this basic multi-cam setup where I show my screen and I also show my face. On my timeline, let's say on this portion of video, I want to have the picture-in-picture -picture effect applied. What I'm gonna do is push Option, click and drag to duplicate that up above. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the audio down to zero. Then I'm gonna push Option and then click on the video feed of my face. And so now this portion of the timeline has been converted over to my face feed. From there, we can come on over to the right side where we'll see PIP 2.0. Now you will also see a legacy version of picture in picture. This is for people who installed version 1.0 and who don't want to break old projects. So to apply picture in picture, it's just like any other effect. I'll click and drag that. And now you can see how it has created this circle cutout of my face. Using these on-screen controls, I can quickly adjust where this is on the screen. So I can scale it here. I can rotate it using this rotation handle. I can adjust the position using this middle handle. And finally, I can adjust where the video is using this far left handle. So I'll go ahead and click and drag this and get it roughly into place. This is where the new features start to showcase. So in the top right, you'll see there's this animation feature. Now the old version kind of had an animation, but it really only worked in one position on the screen and I never really liked it all that much. Now we can go ahead and click animate in. And so if we push play, the video feed is going to auto animate and shrink it down to that top left corner. And we can drag this to literally anywhere on our screen. So if we wanted it really tiny down here in the bottom right, we could do just that. So this is really powerful, very simple to use. It just completely auto animates for us. And if you're not happy with the speed, you can adjust the speed slider here. So if we want it to be much slower, we could do just that. Moving further down, we can also adjust what kind of shape this is. So currently it's set to a circle. I'm gonna set it over to a square. And just like that, we've completely transformed how it looks. We can adjust the roundness on the corners of the rectangle. And we can of course adjust the pip scale over here. So if we need to add keyframes, we can do that. And our video scale so that if we need to adjust whatever's inside of the picture in picture effect, we can do that as well. Moving further down, you're gonna see this extend video edges. Now, currently you'll see how there's this kind of gray background behind my video feed. What we can do is enable that and it's going to replicate the edges of the video so that you don't see any of those harsh seams. However, this does come at the expense of sometimes if you adjust it in a weird way, you can see there's a reflection of me at the top of the screen. So just be careful when you're using this so that you don't accidentally have two heads or something in your scene. Moving Moving further down the settings, we have the option to enable or disable the border, so I can do that. And now we just have a nice clean cutout. We can also change the color of it, so I'll set my branding colors over to orange. We could adjust the width, so I'll just click and drag that up quite a bit. Moving further down, we can adjust whether it's on the inside of the picture-in-picture -picture effect or the outside. We can, of course, add an offset. And down here, we can fade the inside. So if I drag that up, you're gonna notice that there's almost kind of a drop shadow effect, but it's slightly transparent and reveals the background behind it. But then you'll notice there's also a secondary border option. And this is so that you can really customize your picture in picture effect to look exactly as you want it for your videos. So I'm gonna enable the secondary border and we can also unlink these colors. So now we've got this blue and orange look to it. We could adjust the width of the secondary border. We could of course adjust the offset. So it's really up to you how you want this picture and picture effect to look for your videos. And it's really powerful because you can enable all of your branded colors directly into the border of your video. So moving even further down, you're gonna get to these background options. Now earlier you saw that dark gray background on the video feed, but let's say you're using something like a green screen or maybe even Keeper. What we could do is jump on in, I'll apply Keeper Keeper onto my video because I didn't film it on a green screen. And you're gonna need to make sure that Keeper or your green screen is always applied before your picture in picture effect. Right now you can see how it's not really working. So I'm gonna click and drag Keeper up above FCB's picture in picture effect. So now you can see we have this dark gray background. 
I could even go in and change the color of that background if I wanted so we could get this teal background or something like that. We can also enable or disable a nice little grain filter on it. You could have that grain animate if you so desired. You could drag up how much grain is there. So it's really up to you how this background looks. But more importantly, there's also the ability to use a drop zone. So if you wanted to, you could change it from color solid over to drop zone. And now using this drop zone well, I can put in whatever background I want. So I'll go ahead and click that well, and maybe I'll just select this backdrop right here and push apply. So now that background has been applied onto my video. We can of course adjust the pan and scale of this drop zone if we so desire. And moving further down, we have the ability to adjust the opacity. So if we want that background to be slightly transparent, we could do that. And finally, there's this source drop shadow. If I enable that, it's going to add a drop shadow for whatever is cut out in the middle of your picture and picture effect. And that drop shadow is just gonna copy the drop shadow settings that are down here below. So we could adjust the distance and the blur. And that is of course also going to apply to the outer lines. Let's say we've gone through and adjusted all of these settings and we don't wanna to have to adjust this every single time we do the picture and picture effect in Final Cut Pro. Well, now that I've added all of these various settings, we can go ahead and select save effects preset. I'm gonna disable keeper for now and just leave the Final Cut Bros picture and picture effect. We could just call this pip preset and drop it into whatever category we like and push save. So now anytime we want these same settings, we just look up our pip preset. I'll go ahead and delete it here. And then we can just click and drag that pip preset directly onto our video. And all of those settings are going to be applied, saving you so much time trying to work with these different settings to get your branding on point. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button. Also, you might wanna check out this video where I actually show you how to create your own picture in picture effect using Apple motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.